Yeah, it's recording. Okay, so uh, your final product is going to be some sort of a data collection tool. Yes, Andermatt, would you like to? Uh, I just want to ask, actually, uh, my understanding is uh, quite the same with others, but are we going to develop a mobile application for it or just a web application? Uh, I think a web app could would be enough, but you can be wild and create a mobile app if you want. But a, a mobile app would be enough. Okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, your final uh, product is going to be some sort of uh, a data collecting tool that is going to be somehow somewhere deployed and it's going to allow users um, to get a text, right? You're going to provide users some text that you uh, are going to uh, you are going to receive an audio for, right? So you're going to provide users some text, and do you, um, is that a question or okay? Um, so yeah, and the users can um, maybe put a transcribe put an audio version of the text that you've pro you've provided. It could be uh, in the form of they could you could let them. Uh, record right there in the web app or you can maybe uh, provide a way they can upload a, an audio version of that text and and then you're going to uh, use that text and you're going to um, somehow train it's going to so the whole point is that in the end it, this audio is going to help train your module right but this in this case we do not have a module so we're going to create or you're, or you're going to have a way where you can Okay, so, uh, sorry about that. So, um, where was I? I was dropped out. Okay, so you're going to receive an audio from uh, users, and you're going to uh, you're going to use this audio to uh, and somehow to train your speech to text model, right? Um, you you guys haven't done that model, but by assuming that you have some model that you don't have to worry about right now, but by assuming that you have some model, then this uh, this project is going to help you provide or uh, create some a data collecting tool that's going to help you in the to train the model that you might need in the future. So uh, for that to happen, then you need to have somehow to you need to create. Um, a page, right? A web page or a web app, or it could be a mobile app, uh, depending on your needs. But so for, so that users can interact. So today we're going to talk about what mobile uh, and web and mobile frameworks are and how to use them. Okay. Uh, let me just share my screen and we can start. Okay. You can see my screen, right? Okay. Um, so, uh, what are web and mobile frameworks? Uh, so, uh, so a, a web framework or some there are some sort of a software framework that are designed to support and to support your the development of uh, any web application that could include a web service a web api or a web resource so there are a set of resources and 
tools for uh, software developers to build and manage web applications. So we use them as a, as a way to develop and create some different kind of APIs or uh, different kind of web applications. So they're kind of a piece of software that offer you uh, this way to create and run your web applications. So, um, so before, uh, when web applications were used to be um, were developed, they were uh, in a tra in the traditional way. They did not uh, have the whole client. Uh, it was not um, focusing on the client, right? It was just some static application that did not focus mainly on the client. But now, uh, the whole web app logic is focusing on the client and shifting towards ensuring some some smarter communication between the user and the web application and this this is this is a logic on the client side where the client can react uh, to the user inputs or uh, and this this could make our web apps more responsive or it can make um, it could make them easily navigatable or or any on any device right so um we usually have two different types of frameworks that so it could be on the server side or it could be on the client side so we we kind of we discussed about what uh the, the server side or the back end is going to be last time but today we're going to talk about what the client side is going to be is going to to be like uh, if i'm sorry if i'm going between other course i'm i'm on the only teen academy team in the call right now so i'm the one uh accepting the the trainees okay um so so the modern um web applications focus on uh MV mvp architecture right so most of the framework dep depend on mvc architecture and they are the main reason uh so there is the main reason this pattern is uh, preferred is that instead of the traditional design is that it separates the application logic from the interface and and from the any three uh, essential parts that represents the architecture name which is the model the view and the control uh, so what are what is the model what is the view or what is the controller? Uh, would anybody like to say? Does anybody know? Let's make this an, an engaging class. Sorry, what was the question? Um, I was asking if if you know what the model view control stands for and what they are. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, okay. Uh, in uh, in this case, oh, we. Uh, other way like model view controller uh, model and like, uh, database related type related business logic and the view is for the user the users to interact with and the controller is the one orchestrate the model that's short description yeah precisely so that's exactly what it does so a model is responsible for, responsible for maintaining uh anything that that's related to that the data right it's it's going to maintain and uh handle what the data does and the view is going to uh so um so the model it has uh the business logic 
and some guidelines and functions and it's it's interacts with the controller only right so it doesn't uh, directly interact with the view part of the application and the view is uh, used to display the model and it's in the form of a uh, user interface right so uh, it's the graphical representations of of what your app does it's the app's front end and it gets the user input and communicates communicates to the controller for different type of logics and that's what the, the view does and the controller it acts as uh, some sort of middleman between the model and the view uh, so what it does is it takes a uh, user's input and manipulates and manipulates the data which is going to be what the model does and sends it to the uh, to the con to the model and send it does and most of um, so it translates an input data into some some sort of commands and it sends it back to the uh, model and so yeah most of uh, today's frameworks are are considering are based on the MVP MVC architecture sorry so uh, what are uh, mobile application frameworks uh, well um, so Yeah, so uh, we have different types of uh, web apps, right? We have different frameworks that that are, that are famous or that are actually being used by most developers these days. And the first one is Ruby on Rails. Uh, it's uh, it's based on the language Ruby, and uh, it's it actually more uh, you actually can develop an application faster with Rails when than the JavaScript framework, so it's faster. It's to develop, and uh, the second one is Django. Uh, it's another framework that helps us build uh, some web application, and it it uses the Python language, and it was uh, intended to meet the fast-moving newsroom deadline when it was uh, developed. Right, uh, so when they were when this framework was developed the developers say that the applications are ridiculously fast secure and scalable and that's uh, some of the features that makes this framework uh, really popular and the third one is angular so uh, so this is an, a framework that was uh, generated or developed by google and it's going to help you build powerful web apps so uh, it could be used to build large scale and high performing applications while making them easy to maintain so uh, it's 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 developed using the javascript language and it's very easy to to use if you are if you are familiar with javascript language and the fourth one is asp.net and it's a framework that was developed by microsoft uh, so it's going to help so it's usually uh, used in larger corporations and it helps us to build uh, robust web applications for uh, a computer and and also for a mobile devices right so they have high performance and they are lightweight framework for building web applications and it uses uh, the language c sharp and um so it's a very powerful framework that's Product that can help you in productivity and speed. Um, and the next one is a lot of it. So it's a framework created uh, like the other frameworks. So it's, it also follows the MVC architecture and it's simple and readable. So uh, you can, one can start learning it and develop using Laravel very easily. And it uh, uses the language PHP and this the last one is spring um so it's the most popular application development framework enterprise that is that that's developed for java right so uh it uses spring to create high 
to performance and robust web applications. So we can create simple and portable applications using Spring and uses the language Java to develop the application. So this is the, the, the most common web application frameworks. And when we're talking about mobile applications, um, so when we're talking about mobile applications, then they are uh, they're the ones that offer us the, the fundamental structures to create our mobile applications for a specific environment. It could be for an Android version, an Android OS, or it could be for iOS. And it's it acts as a layout that's going to support the mobile app development. And um, so there are different types of um, mobile application frameworks. They can be uh, native web app or hybrid uh, applications. So there is also another uh, thing that's called progressive web app. So it's a hybrid between um, a mobile app and a web app, a responsive web app. So they are designed to develop uh, a website, but they can also feel like an application or they can also feel like a, a, a mobile app and they can be placed as an app on, on, on your device and you can use it without the need of installing the actual app from a web store or, or something. And they're usually developed using JavaScript frameworks and they're going. They're designed to give you uh, almost a native experience. They're not completely native experience because uh, you can't access the the mobile utility app, uh, services or some kind of um, features that your mobile provides. For example, uh, it may not access your camera or your location. But it is progressive. It, it's progressing really fast, and it's. Uh, it's adapting these new features uh, when it's being developed. So uh, that's something that's also coming. That's a web framework, but it can also feel like a mobile app framework. So uh, what are the the actual mobile frameworks? They are the native apps. So these are uh, an application that is specifically designed for a particular platform or a device. So. In native apps, uh, the apps are designed particularly for, it could be for the Android app or it could be for iOS app. And they are uh, built separately. So if your app is on, built for, if, it, if your app is native app and if it's built for an Android app, then you cannot access it in iOS and any other mobile OSs that are available out there. And the same goes for I, if it's developed for iOS. Um, so it has independent code structure and code base. Uh, so web apps are uh, uh, they are the corners with the application that is designed to deliver web pages on different web platforms for any device. So these are what we discussed. It could be accessed on your mobile using any type of uh, browser or any type of application. So. What are the hybrid apps? So the hybrid apps are a combination of both native and uh, web application. So they can be developed uh, for any platform and we can use a single code base to create our hybrid apps. Uh, okay, so some of the common uh, mobile frameworks or some of mobile frameworks are uh, are React Native, the first one. So uh, in web in web framework, we have React considered as a framework, but it's actually a, a library. It's a JavaScript library. That's why I did not mention it in popular uh, web application frameworks because React is uh, a library, not a framework. But uh, React Native uh, is a framework and it was created by Facebook and it's an open source and it's an open source library. And um, so it was designed to build apps on multiple platforms, right? So you could be built for uh, Android, it could be built for iOS or any type of uh, mobile app frameworks or operating systems, right? So um, so it's one of the most recommended mobile applications and 
uh, it's based on React and JavaScript. Uh, so that is aimed to develop native applications over the hybrid applications. And they run on a uh, web view um, method and they're cross-platform development framework. So it means they, they use a single code for both Android and iOS applications. There are some, some uh, tweaks that you need to do if you want your application to run on iOS or to run on Android, but uh, generally speaking, they have um, a single code base that's that's used for development. Uh, so, um, so yeah, uh, some of the features are or benefits are it's the codes are very it could be reusable, so it's it's going to be cost effective. So most of the, it's a component-based component, component based, uh, development. So it makes it makes our code reusable and it is compatible with third party libraries. It was, it, we have different plugins that makes, that gives us an, the native look and everything. And React can uh, be, is React Native is, is easily compatible with this third party plugins. Uh, and like I said, it has reusable components, and this is going to be easy for maintainers because uh, since it's component based, then we can easily maintain uh, the features of our application. So uh, there are some famous um, applications that are built using React Native. Uh, one is the Instagram. So it's a very famous. Um, framework. Uh, so the second one is Flutter. So Flutter is, um, so is, it was developed by Google and it, it has a different UI toolkits that are built for native application for, for both mobile web and desktop application or platforms. And it's, again, it's also cross-platform mobile application framework because it has the same code base. And, um, it works on one code base to develop the Android as well as the iOS application. And, it, and this framework provides a large range of uh, widgets that will help us build our native applications. Um, some of the benefits are, uh, so yeah, it provides the native performance, right? Rea Flutter has, uh, it has some, functionalities that provide you the full native performance and it has a very flexible user interface and it could be um, it could be really fast for application developments and yeah and it offers built-in material design so it's some sort of a design framework that we can use in our application development uh, so uh, so ionic this is supposed to be Ionic. So Ionic was um, is also another web, web uh, mobile framework, and it's it's an application built through the Ionic framework, and it can work on Android, iOS, and Windows platform. and And it was developed in two thousand thirteen, and it's an open source framework. and So it uses uh, it's built on top of uh, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript and uh, it's built through the Ionic framework and it offers uh, multiple UI components. Uh, you can, we have a different kind of uh, navigation menu, uh, filters, forms, or different kind of sheets that are more attractive and more uh, engaging designs. And it has, it has its own command line interface and that's why it's mostly popular that because it has its own command line interface and it's, uh, yeah. So these are the main reasons why it's, uh, it's popular and it's be used in that, at the current time. And some of the benefits are, so it, ha it allows use developers for, to develop faster, right? So it allows fast application development because it, it's more or less um, easy because if you are familiar with the JavaScript language and it has uh, just like um, the Flutter, it has the built-in UI components and it, it is based on the Angular, Angular JS. 
So these are uh, some of the mobile application frameworks. Um, so with that said, I think we should just maybe uh, start with the, to, to take a look at the implementation of s some uh, web app or mobile app. So today, let's just uh, go through how we can create uh, some page using React and how we can create um, a login or sign up page using React. And if we have time, we can also take take a look at what React Native can do. So let me just go to my uh, my coding terminal. Okay, uh, yes, is that a question? Yeah, I have a question. Um, you, you used the um, Angular, uh, Angular JS in, in the, you used, uh, in the backend framework. Is it, the, can you do it, uh, can you, can you perform like backend frame, uh, framework stuff like Django and Laravel do? Oh, uh, no, no, uh, those are not uh, the backend. Angular is not a backend framework. Those are just web frameworks, web frameworks, right? It has a combination of uh, front end and the back end in the list, in the list. So it wasn't just the back end I was mentioning, but Angular is a front end framework. We can only so, design the app. Okay. So uh, my, my second question is how, 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 how those app being uh being hosted how do you host the those application made with react or react native or like those uh or Flutter, those were native app applications how how are they they are back and hosted Okay, so we, we don't actually uh, use Angular to generate our front end. So we use different other types of uh, back end frameworks. We could use Django or you can use Node or Express to, to generate or to create your back end, right? So those are going to be separated. So they are going to be uh, developed and built separately. And we're going to deploy our built, uh, our separated built uh, code. And then we can connect them to the Angular or to any type of front-end framework if that's what you, what your question is. So, so uh, is that that means you can you can create an a Django application, like like Django backend application, host it for free, like on Heroku, then uh, build build Flutter application, you install it in your phone and then connect their API. Is it, is it uh, can that make sense? Uh, yeah, it does make sense, but uh, yes, it does. We can create a full stack. Uh, project using oh, Django and any other front end framework. So those are the, uh, so you need to specify what are considered front end, what are considered Backend frameworks, right? I mean, because Django is is a is a backend framework, right? Yeah. Okay, so I, I was saying I, I was saying you you can create a, a a backend application with Django and host it for free. Then you create an application, then uh, share it to people and consume your data or your your application with all free hosted, right? Yeah, that's yes. what I was trying to ask. Yes, that's yeah, that yeah. sounds good. I did that. Thanks. Okay. Uh, okay. Yes, that's nice. Uh, my question is somehow not related to this topic, but can I proceed? Um. Sure. Yeah. Okay, I was trying to install uh, an app 
Kafka using pip install. Confluent once, Confluent Kafka, and I couldn't install. It has a, a, a lab dev error, like you have to install the, a lab dev package. Uh, I've, I've been having those issues like one or two times, but the one that fixed for me was using the Miniconda's environment. Can I keep using that? I think the Miniconda environment is spread out for everyone. It's not like uh, specific for a group, like it's for the whole machine, I think. Uh, and, maybe I can, I, I can answer that question. Okay. Uh, yes, nothing. Really. You can, <clears throat> if the, uh, we'll set up a basic Python environment for every instance, but if that's not working, yes, you can create another Conda environment and at least, but make sure that you have access. Uh, every member of your group has access to that Python environment because you need to be on the same page when installing packages. And uh, the one who is installing the package, the one who is to do access, should uh, give access to others to install to use that install package. But yes, you can use that package. Okay. Yes, but uh, I think I, I was trying to create an environment on the mini Conda one, but mm. the Conda command wasn't found. That I couldn't find the actual command. Uh, are you a, are you in the list of the sudoers or? Yeah, I'm the sudoer. Yeah. Okay, so if you have sudo access, you can uh, you can configure that to be accessed globally on the instance on that specific instance. Which group are you, Natalie? Group two. So for group two, you can enable that environment to be used by every member of the group. Okay, yeah, uh, that's what I, what we have tried yesterday. But what we have done was like creating an environment on not on Conda, but normally Python, Python virtual env. Okay. But on okay. the Conda one, I couldn't create like Conda create environment. I couldn't find the Conda command. Like command not found was the response I have been getting. Yes, for that you need to install the Conda environment on the home directory. And uh, do you know how you can create a shared uh, Conda environment on a machine? Uh, I think if I put it like in our home directory, we can access it, right? Yes, yes. You, you will put it on the home directory and you'll make it shared. There are some configuration that you need to add on the bash RC and everyone on that group uh, will be able to access the installed packages uh, by the sudo, by the one that has sudo access. Okay, I'll try that. Thank okay. you. Uh, okay, I think my address left. Andrew, go on. Uh, my, my question is related to the interim submission. Uh, so we are required to uh, put a screenshot of our uh, S3 packet. So uh, we get that. I think. Uh, we need to have a Amazon account to an S3 bucket. So how are we going to do that? Uh, actually, the S3 bucket is not, you, you won't be accessing the S3 bucket on a separate, uh, on a separate interface. You can access the S3 instance directly under your machine. There should be a file pass to connect to the S3. So you won't normal, uh, normally, I can go to the S3 instance from my uh, AWS account, but for your case, we are not giving you a separate S3 just, instance. You just can access that uh, under, under your EC2 instance. It's just a folder. Buzz. All right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Okay, hope. Okay, Nardus, are you back? Okay, she might have, uh, she might be having an internet issue. Is there any other question related to uh, maybe this week's challenge or to what she has been presenting? Okay, uh, sorry. My connection broke. Okay, uh, so allow me to share my. VS
okay, you can see my uh, my VS Code, right? So what I did is uh, that I created a React app, and now I'm, I'm I've started it, and so by default, you guys can hear me, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. So by default, uh, React, you're going to have this uh, starter code, and it's going to um, okay. So it's going to show you just uh, the the logo of React, and that's the first thing you see when you start working or when you start uh, your React app. Uh, Mohammed, is that a question? Yes, actually. Um, can you uh, do the, the the starting code? By by that I mean uh, doing from the first command you initialize the project to. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, so what I did is just okay. Let me get. So. What I did is uh, I created a, a React app. Let me just create a new React app, and I can show you how to create your own. So that Uh, not just might be having an internet connection. Mohammed, what was your question? Uh, I asked I asked her to start uh, initializing the, the React code from the first beginning. By oh, that I okay. mean. Okay. Uh, okay, maybe until she joins, let me just share the official. Have you uh, looked into the official documentation of React or other front-end framework? applications yes i have tried that but uh i i asked nardos for a refresher so oh okay okay so okay all right so sorry so you can create your uh first react app using npx or you can also use uh yarn but you can just create react react app and you can name it whatever you want so uh, I could just if I wanted to create I don't know so on the app then I can just create it like this it's going to take some a few minutes but yeah this is the command you use to create uh, a react app So it's going to take some time. That's why I I jumped this part of the. Okay, I understood that. You can skip that part. Um, okay, so I'm just going to stop this because this is already a, a new app that I created for this tutorial for the purpose of this tutorial. So. Uh, so the, at first, when you, uh, when you you when you run your this uh, sample code that's already provided, you can just you can just run npm start, or you can also use yarn. But I'm just going to focus on npm today. Uh, so it's going to start uh, your. React app in your browser. So when you run npm start, this should be the first thing you see. Um, 
this is uh, the default code that's provided by uh, by by, the, by React when you first create um, a new React application. So we're going to remove all of this and we are going to start from scratch and we're going to create some components that's going to help us um, get some input from users and I'm going to stop sharing this and share my code. Okay, so we can just so we can just remove all of this. Okay, we can just remove all of this, and we can start with uh, our application. So to start, uh, I've, I've created this components file folder that's going to have that's going to hold my components, and um, so let me just. Uh, uh, let this be the login form. Okay, um, I'm going to create a login page. So this is going to be ah. So let us, uh, we're going to create our new login page and we're going to space, uh, have different components so that uh, we're, we, don't, we don't have all of our components in our uh, main file. You can also have everything done here, it's fine, but for the purpose of uh, having different components that are e going to be easy to manage if your application is going to be big, uh, it's, uh, it's best if you work with uh, components, right? So we're going to create some function and this is going to be the app function. So uh, here we're going to, and then we can export. So we can export our default app. So <clears throat> here it's, we can just create, so th we're going to be creating our what 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 is going to be uh, rendered or returned in the main uh, page here? So we can return. So here we can just um, we can create uh, a different uh, div and and we can call it. Um, so let's say here if we want so and in our login form. Then we can here we can create our own uh, our own components, right? So uh, let me just import import. We're going to need we're going to be using different uh, states, right? So uh, I'm going to import my states right now, so so that when we are working on Okay, so when
uh, just hold on guys. I think she's having not good internet connection today. Uh, maybe until she joins back, uh, does anyone has any question regarding the okay, yeah, brown? Yeah, go. Uh, okay, go on. Okay, it's just a quick one. Can you just uh, repeat what you just said? I'm sorry, I didn't hear that uh, when you said it before. Can you just repeat what you said about the S3 bucket? The one under the task. Uh, okay, so. Okay, sure. So the way that you are going to access the S3 bucket isn't uh, using the interface, the AWS interface. It's a folder pass under your instance. So once you connect to your instance, uh, you're going to store all of your data as a normal directory, the way that you would store on your normal directory. For example, uh, let's say I have a directory slash, uh, on the home directory, maybe slash home, slash DDS, slash S3. Uh, if that's the S3 pass, you just copy the data from, uh, from maybe from Kafka or from the stream, Spark stream station back to the S3 bucket. So by S3 bucket, we are just referring to a specific folder under your instance. That's how it's instantiated. Thank you. Okay, uh, Brown. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm, I have a question on the data. Uh, can we uh, work on the, the store the data on the Google Drive or there's a way to uh, upload the data on the uh, remote machine. Uh, okay, so you just can uh, clone that uh, on your machine. So uh, it's an audio, it's CTX data, right? Yeah, it's text there. Yeah. yeah, so you just can clone that on your machine so that everyone can access. It's based to uh, clone it uh, in a place that every member of the group can access that so that you won't have to clone that uh, for each member of the group and once that data is cloned to your machine where everyone of the group member can access you just can access that the normal way that you can do okay thank you uh, Andrew, it. yeah i haven't uh, I, i'm not able to locate the uh, s3 bucket's directory uh, where exactly mm -hmm. is it Okay, let me check that and let me get back to you. Maybe on Slack. Yes, I, I, I'll post that on Slack. Sure, thank you. Okay, and if required, uh, maybe I will also, we will also edit the document for this week and uh, we'll keep you updated. Yes, I don't think it's on the documents. Uh, Great data lake. Yes, we will upgrade the document and uh, we'll give you an update on Slack. Okay, Michael. Okay, okay, thank you, Edidia. Uh, my question was uh, what does it really mean uh, installing? Uh, Kafka for all users, and how could I do that if I do not have the sudo user account? Uh, I, I think I might not be able to uh, do that, right? Uh, no, you won't be able to do that, but why would you need to install Kafka on your machine? We have already set up Kafka for uh, every group okay. members, and everyone can access Kafka directly without installing anything. Okay, okay, I thought that uh, after asking you some question on Slack, I, I thought I, uh, I, we must first install Kafka and now we solve it. If it's okay. installed, we yes. So, yes, so if there is anything additional that you want to install as a group, just talk to your, uh, to, to your leader or sub-leader, uh, at least one or two group member should have a pseudo access on each group. If not, please reach out on Slack and those members should be able to install that package for everyone. Uh, Nahum, no, okay, okay, Michael. Uh, Nahum, no, you don't have to implement the STT engine or the speech-to-text engine. 
you just have to build the pipeline which will take the input from users. It's just a data collection pipeline which will take an input from different users and store it uh, for later training that maybe uh, you might implement in the coming weeks or it might or it might only be used as a data source for future trainings. Uh, okay, Isaac. Once you have started the airflow on your local, not on your local machine, but on the instance, you can forward that port so that you can be able to access uh, that port. For example, uh, if you started the airflow on your instance on port 8080, you need to forward that port to your local machine. So the same way that you are forwarding the port for the notebook, you need to forward the port for airflow or any other application. Maybe if you're working on front end application on port 3000 or 4001 or any other ports, you need to forward that port to your local machine to be able to access that on your web, uh, on your local web browser. Uh, yes, in the config file, but um, if you are using base code, there is an option to add a port or to forward a port uh, on your base code. Right, at, right uh, uh, in the terminal, once you open up your terminal, there is uh, there is a bar called port, and when you click that section, that bar, uh, you, you, you will see that you can forward a port to your local machine. But yes, the same way that we are doing for the notebooks, you can add it on the config file. Any other question? Oh, Nardus, is that you? Okay. Hans? Jonas, go on. You're muted for speaking. You're not muted, but we can't hear. Jonas, is that the question? Uh, okay, so uh, if you have seen uh, your configuration that you are currently using, uh, there is a port forwarded uh, for the so you, you so that you can be able to access the notebooks on your local machine, right, Johannes? So the same way that uh, yes, so the same way that we are using that configuration file to access uh, that port for that port of the notebook on our local machine. We can add uh, additional ports to access ports uh, to access different ports, maybe for the front end application or even for other applications, maybe Airflow or other web applications. Okay, sorry, uh, I was muted from my laptop. Now I'm logged in with my phone. So my question was: uh, so first, I don't know how to add the base code into the AC2 instance. I have not done that. And then, so by by adding the port, do you mean like uh, the way how do we how we access the Jupyter Hub? I mean, there is a port uh, forward port there. So just like, the, uh, are you referring to that? Uh, okay, just a minute. Maybe let me share my screen. Uh, okay. Just for a minute until Nardos gets back, and let me show you how. Uh, uh, how we can forward the first one base code. Okay, can you see my base code? Or yes, it's coming. Okay, can you see my base code? Yes, yes. Uh, so I'm now connected to Groupon. And let me just open the folder. Let me open the home directory. Then uh,
okay, it's taking a while, but uh, 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 once you open your terminal, you should be able to see uh, another section. So yes, one, there is one, yes. Can you see the port section that I have uh, on the terminal section? Yes, I can see it from yours, but uh, yes, it's not so, in my base code. So uh, are you connected to the instance code? using base code? No, I mean, there is a Jupyter option, but not the ports. Uh, are you connected to the instance using base code? Okay, oh, let me do that. You, you won't be able to see that on your local machine, yes. So now I'm, uh, okay, it's connected. So uh, right I, on the right side of the terminal, uh, there is the port section. I have forwarded the port for the notebook, but okay. uh, when you are building a React application, Angular application, or even Airflow or any other web server, you can uh, add the port here and this specific port will be forwarded. For example, if it's on port 3000, uh, this specific port will be uh, forwarded and you can open that on your local machine. Uh, this is the logic that the config file is, is using. So uh, when you are using the config file to forward the port uh, from your machine to your local machine, uh, it's just forwarding that port from the instance to your local machine so that you can be able to access that specific port that's being exposed on your local machine. Is there anything prior to prior configuration uh, to do? No, for the ports, no. Uh, the, you don't, you won't yes. need to install anything. Uh, it, it's there by default when you connect to the instance. Yeah, I am connected to the instance yet. Uh, it is okay, closer. maybe can you share uh, your screen? Yes, I can do that. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, Michael. So, Edith, yeah, I was uh, trying to ask what does a port uh, column represent on the port table you have showed us? Uh, it's just a way to forward a port uh, from the AWS instance to your local machine. So it refers to the port number on the AWS instance, right? Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, okay, Johannes, are you sure that you are connected? Uh, you're, you just connect your, uh, you just connect, you are just connected on the terminal, but you need to connect uh, the entire base code by using the SSH extension. Uh, have you installed the SSH in, uh, extension? Okay, so can I... you open the SSH extension? Okay, let me see it. So should I have... It's the third one from the bottom, yes. Which exactly? The, the, the third one from the bottom. Yes, okay, up then. in the third one, yes. Okay. Not that one. The one above, yeah. Okay, let me... Oops. No, you, you, you have installed the extension. It's under the extensions tab. Okay. Is there a way I can uh, yes. open it for you? Uh, okay, just go to the, to the bars on the left side. Okay. And it's just under the one that you currently, that's currently opened. And right under one. the extension stub. Okay, this is the remote explorer. Yes, yes, the remote explorer. So yes. you add a new one. Okay, how do I do that? Uh, okay, there is no button to add a new extension. Okay, nothing. I think you have to change the uh, containers. The to containers to. too. No, oh, okay. Yeah. Can you open the, the drop, drop down? down? Yes. 
There is Can a I drop down. There is a drop down in the top on the top side. Mm, I didn't clearly hear it. Yes. This one? Yeah. Yes. It's then it's targets. targets. Yes. Then uh, open up G5. Okay. So should I click that plus button? And not the plus button, but the the, the folder icon. Okay. Uh, the folder icon on the right side. N not file just go back to the SSH, to the SSH Explorer, to the okay. Remote Explorer. Then uh, on the right side, there is a folder icon, right? This one, yes. Uh, click that. Uh, did you click the uh, the folder icon? No. Yes, that's the only one uh, in the right side. And then it's asking me to connect to the host in a window. Uh, okay, so I think we are only seeing your base code uh, screen. Maybe you can share your full window and... Okay, let me change that. You can right click on it. Maybe it's not. Yes, and click uh, connect. Maybe you, then you can connect on the same window, right? At the end, when you right click on the yes. Okay. Can you see it now? Yes. This is what comes when I click the. Yeah. Okay. This is the only thing that I'm seeing here. Is a. Uh, okay. Can you open up the new window? The the new base code window. Yes. Okay, it's Can trying to connect. Yes, sir. Hmm. Okay, it's now connected. Uh, can you open up your terminal? The first one, right? Uh, on, on, the, on the new uh, base code window. Okay, so... Uh, you can see that your connected to the SSH instance, to the AWS instance, yes. On that yes. section, that will tell you that you are connected. That's yeah. the name of your instance. So just mm -hmm. open up the terminal on that window. Okay. Control, then tilde, maybe, okay. Then there's the ports section. Can you see the ports? Yes, yes, I can. Yes, from it. that, you can, because you have, because of the way that you have set up uh, the notebook on uh, on your config file, uh, port yes. 8007 will be the forward by default. So if you want to forward another port, this is just one way, okay, guys? We might be going far, but this is just one way. But the normal way that we are doing that is uh, we are using the config file and we are adding the ports that we want to be forwarded. This is just one way of forwarding the ports to our local machine. Thank you very much. That was a lot. Okay. Uh, Nardus? Uh, we can't hear you if you are speaking, you are not available. Uh, okay, just a minute, let me call her and uh, I'll get back to you guys. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, guys. I think Nardus is having a mic problem. So, uh, 
I don't think we can continue the session. Maybe we'll try to have another session on next week. So this session was primarily uh, for the web uh, for the web three challenge that you will be you guys will be working on the coming weeks. Having a solid understanding on the web app is really essential. Then also uh, you might be required to build a mobile application. For that, you need a basic skills to build mobile applications. For those of you that are already familiar on React and have React skills, uh, switching back to React Native is really easy and you just have to change the way that you name uh, your components when working with React Native. And there is also another option for uh, some of you might already be familiar with uh, Flutter and other mobile building tools. Uh, but for those that are already familiar with React, I recommend you to use React Native if you are not familiar with other uh, mobile app development tools. Uh, so yeah, uh, just try to uh, watch some tutorials or read some documentations and prepare yourself for the coming Wave 3 challenge. Uh, Anjanet, was that a question or? No, you've already answered it. So I, I was going to ask you if we can use Flutter. Yeah, you can use any of the uh, mobile app development tools that you are comfortable with. We are not limited to React Native or Flutter. You can use Darmine or any other tools, but, but you need to at least be comfortable, not very comfortable, but have uh, the basic understanding of mobile app development. So it's really easy nowadays to build mobile apps. You just can't, you can even also uh, use drag and drop and use no code solutions, but at least knowing the basics of one of the mobile app uh, development tools or framework is uh, good uh, for you guys, especially for those that are going for the Wave 3 track. Uh, what's the difference between React Native and React TypeScript? Uh, okay, so I think it's totally different. Uh, uh, by different, I mean that React Native and React, uh, React is for the web app and React Native is for the mobile app and TypeScript just adds the uh, type nature into JavaScript. So when, if you have used JavaScript, it's not typed, uh, meaning that, uh, okay, I won't get much into the details of TypeScript and JavaScript, but uh, React is the web app development framework, but React Native is for the mobile app, and TypeScript is common for both. You can use TypeScript on the mobile app or even uh, on the web app. Yeah, uh, exactly. Okay, so just when you get time, try to look into one of the tools. And if you are also very comfortable on working on uh, one of the uh, front-end frameworks, you can also try to look into uh, PWA or Progressive Web Apps. Uh, without even building a mobile app, you can uh, convert your web application to a mobile application, and you can easily get uh, an installable application on both iOS and uh, Android. Uh, okay, then uh, we can end our session here. Let me stop the recording and uh,